Why do these Hitchcock films stand up well? They don't look old-fashioned. Well, I don't know the answer. I think it's because they're so rigorous. Il n'y a pas les caractéristiques non plus du moment dedans, parce qu'ils se situent entièrement par rapport à vous-même. Yes. My dad was a big movie buff, and it was one of the books that was in his library. From the time I was about seven years old, he knew I wanted to make movies, so he recommended it to me. And I remember picking over it, and I, I must have read it, sections of it. Like there's the Oscar Homolka sequence from Sabotage, where it sort of lays out all of the cutting pattern. It's not even a book anymore. It's like a stack of papers because it was, a, you know, I had a paperback, and it's just, a, it's, you know, you, you know, it's got a rubber band around it. In 1966, Francois Truffaut published one of the few indispensable books on movies, a series of conversations with Alfred Hitchcock about his career, title by title. It was a window into the world of cinema that I hadn't had before because it was a director simultaneously talking about his own work but doing so in a way that was utterly unpretentious and had no pomposity. There was starting to be these kind of erudite conversations about the art form. But, you know, Truffaut was the first one where you really felt that, uh, you know, they were talking about the craft of it. It was incredibly fascinating to me that these two people from very different worlds were both doing the same job, how they would talk about things. It's not just Truffaut who made a book on Hitchcock. The livre de Truffaut sur Hitchcock, il est une pièce essentielle de son œuvre. Yeah, I think it it conclusively changed people's opinions about Hitchcock. And so Hitchcock began to be taken much more seriously. At that time the the general consensus and climate was a bullying as usual by the establishment as to what serious cinema is. So it was really revolutionary. Based on what the Truffaut Hitchcock book was, we became radicalized as movie makers. It was almost as if somebody had taken a weight off our shoulders and said, yes, we can embrace this, we can go. In 1962, Hitchcock was 63 years old. A household name in television, 
and a virtual franchise unto himself. He had already been known for many years as the master of suspense, and he had scared the wits out of audiences all over the world with Psycho, and in the process upended our idea of what a movie was. And in this house, the most dire, horrible events took place. Let's go inside. He had just completed his 40th feature, The Birds. Truffaut, half Hitchcock's age, had made only three features, but he was already an internationally renowned and acclaimed filmmaker. Comme mes voyages à New York, quand j'allais présenter mes films à New York, on me demandait, je sais pas, les, les journalistes me demandaient toujours quels étaient mes cinéastes préférés. Et quand je citais Hitchcock, il y avait toujours un espèce d'étonnement. Truffaut wrote Hitchcock a letter. He proposed a series of in-depth discussions of Hitchcock's entire body of work in movies. Je le connaissais déjà parce qu'on l'avait souvent interviewé à Paris. Et il a accepté le principe d'une interview de huit jours. For Truffaut, the book on Hitchcock was every bit as important as one of his own films. And it required just as much time and preparation. Je suis allé à Hollywood avec une interprète collaboratrice, Mrs. Helen Scott, et nous sommes installés un peu vers l'île Sotel. Et tous les jours, on allait au studio Universal et on s'enfermait de 9h du matin à 6h du soir avec des micro-cravates autour du cou. Et on parlait cinéma toute la journée, même pendant les heures de, de repas. The meeting was documented by the great photographer, Philippe Halsman. Hitchcock and Truffaut. They were from different generations and different cultures, and they had different approaches to their work. But both men lived for and through the cinema. My mind is strictly visual. Hitchcock was born with the movies. There's no such thing as a face. It's non-existent until the light hits it. There was no such thing as a line. It's just light and shade. It's a function of pure cinema, as we well know, is the placing of two or three pieces of film together to create a single idea. Hitchcock was trained as an engineer, then moved into advertising. Through that, I went into the designing of what were, in those days of silent films, the art title. And then art direction, script writing, and production duties. They said, how would you like to direct a picture? And I said, uh, I've never thought about it. I was 23. My wife was to be my assistant. We're not married yet. Nous n'étions pas encore mariés. But we're not living in sin either. Mais nous ne vivions pas dans le péché non plus. <laughs> Hitchcock had many close collaborators, but none of them was closer than Alma Reville. She was credited on some films, uncredited on many others, but Hitchcock consulted his wife on every movie he ever made. Lodger was the first time I'd exercise any style.
He's making floors out of glass so they can show people walking in circles in the apartment above. He's, he's playing with all those things that make cinema fun and magic, the tricks of it. He was also conceptual with the way he approached many of these films. This movie, I have an idea for a way that I've never worked before. This is somebody whose mind is racing, filled with ideas, and that's why, you know, we refer to him all the time. Do you realize the squad van will be here any moment? No, really. Oh, my God, I'm terribly frightened. Why? Have you been a bad woman or something? Well, not just bad, but... Uh... But you've slept with men. Oh, no! Night. He directed the first British talkie. Night. Night. Alice, cut us a bit of bread, will you? I mean, in Chelsea, you mustn't use a knife! And then, in 1934, he made the first 100% Hitchcock picture. Tom Moritz was the beginning of the man who knew too much. It was the place of our honeymoon. And of course, Hollywood beckoned. I wasn't attracted to Hollywood as a place. Je n'étais pas attiré à Hollywood comme endroit. They en had no interest. What had interest for me was getting inside that studio. C'était entrer dans le studio. Mais il y a à ta cara quoi, ce Hitchcock a, ce qu'on a dit, d'aller, mata Hitchcock a été américain. Hitchcock did some of his best work in the 40s. But in the 50s, he soared. I have a murder on my conscience, but it's not my murder. And curiosity of James Stewart in this story of a romance shadowed by the terror of a horrifying secret. Look, John. Hold them. Diamond. It was a spell that was cast with those films in the 50s into the 60s. And it's a special, blessed time for me because I saw them as they came out. Truffaut began as a critic in the early 50s. He started at the great French film magazine, Cahier du Cinéma. For the writers at Cahiers, soon to become the filmmakers of the Nouvelle Vague, Hitchcock's greatness as an artist was self-evident. Aujourd'hui, nous avons fait admettre qu'un film d'Hitchcock peut être aussi important dans l'histoire de l'art que l'apparition d'un livre de Gide ou que l'apparition, euh, je ne sais pas, d'Aragon. Je... Before they made their own movies, the Cahiers critics erected a new pantheon of cinema the directors who were the true artists, the authors who wrote with the camera, the auteurs. La poétique des auteurs dit, c'est l'individualisation totale. La poétique des auteurs dit, non pas que tous les films d'Hitchcock sont bons et tous ceux de la noix sont mauvais, mais elle dit, le plus mauvais film d'Hitchcock est plus intéressant pour nous que le meilleur film de, de, de la noix, voilà. Elle est une profession d'individualisme, quand même. La nouvelle vague, c'est le moment où le cinéma prend conscience de lui-même. 
et où de, de, de jeunes cinéastes en devenir euh, disent euh, « le cinéma est un art et nous sommes des artistes ». Being an individual artist meant self-exposure. Pouring all of yourself into your movie, all of your fears and obsessions and fetishes, just like Hitchcock did. All together. Oh. Tout ce qui le terrifie, il le pense jusqu'à un point où il puisse dire qu'il est attiré par ça. Et il ne s'arrête pas simplement à la terreur, est, il, est, il, est, il, est, il a une fascination pour ce qui le terrifie. Donc il est, il y a, il y a plus, au bout d'un moment, il n'y a plus de différence entre ce qui, le, ce qui le fait vibrer de peur ou ce qui le fait vibrer d'amour. Hitchcock often told the story of being sent to the police station as a boy, where he was locked up for a few minutes as a symbolic punishment. He said that it led to a lifelong fear of the police. But Truffaut really was locked up. He was delivered to the police by his own father and then sent to a juvenile detention center. An episode he put into his autobiographical first feature. L'enfance me semble un âge pénible, l'âge où, la, où il est interdit de se tromper, par exemple, où l'erreur s'appelle vraiment un délire. Truffaut had a fierce attachment to freedom. It's there in all of his films. And it sent him in search of another father, a father who would liberate him. He found the great film critic André Bazin, who virtually adopted Truffaut and brought him to Cahiers du Cinéma. He found Jean Renoir and Roberto Rossellini. And he found Alfred Hitchcock. Hitchcock had freed Truffaut as an artist, and Truffaut wanted to reciprocate by freeing Hitchcock from his reputation as a light entertainer. And that's the basis on which they started their conversation. Well, let me check with him and see if he's uh, running yet. <coughs> you started? You're up. All right, you're running now, huh? Okay, fine. We are now on the air. Votre genre de film? Your type of picture? Les gens prennent du plaisir. People Mais, euh, font semblant get de, enjoyment, but pretend de ne pas être dupes, de, uh, not to be fooled. Ils bouderont quand même leur plaisir. They après, self, oui. they begrudge their, but they give their pleasure grudgingly. They, yes. Well, when I say pleasure, I don't mean amusement. I mean Now they're, they're, they're obviously, uh, they're going to sit there and say, show me. Oui, oui, évidemment, ils vont là-bas puis ils disent, montre-moi. <laughs> and they expect to anticipate. I know what's coming next. I have to say, do you? Ce genre de cinéma, qui est satisfaisant pour le public, irrite quelquefois les, les critiques, parce que effectivement, c'est désinvolte à l'égard de la vraisemblance. Yes, but you see, to me, oui, mais vous voyez que pour moi, la vraisemblance pour, le, pour la vraisemblance n'aide à rien. Oui. Vous avez l'habitude, non pas de rechercher la vraisemblance, mais enfin de ne pas l'éviter si But elle est utile. But not to avoid it if it's useful. I have a favorite little saying to myself, logic is dull. Oui, oui, non, c'est vrai, oui. 
Est-ce qu'on peut maintenant essayer de définir le suspense Is it possible exemple? now for us to define suspense? That is to say, mm. are there many forms of suspense? Les gens croient un People peu naïvement, believe, uh, somewhat naively, que le suspense c'est quand on a peur. Is when uh, one is afraid. Ce qui est faux. Which is wrong. No, no. In the Please. film Easy Virtue. Dans le film Easy Virtue. <laughs> the young man was proposing to this woman. Le jeune proposait à cette femme. She wouldn't give an answer. She elle said, uh, n'est pas sa réponse. Elle dit. Uh, I'll call you up when I get back fois. around 12 o'clock. Quand je retournerai vers uh, 12h minuit. Alors j'ai montré un petit montre, montre qui montre minuit. The... C'est l'opérateur sur ce, ce standard de téléphone. That girl is in suspense. Cette fille a du suspense. And she was relieved at the Elle a été soulagée à la fin that the suspense was over. que le suspense était terminé. The woman said yes la femme a dit oui. Suspense doesn't always have la fear suspense ne, ne, ne suggère pas nécessairement la crainte, la ouais. peur. Moi, c'est ça, pas nécessairement. talks about things contextualizing what the work of a director truly is at its most fundamental and most simple. Emotionally, the size Alors of the image is very important. You are dealing with space. You may need space and use it dramatically. Que vous avez besoin de cet espace pour s'en servir dramatiquement. When the girl shrunk back on the sofa, s'est reculée sur le sofa. I kept the camera back and used the space la en arrière et me to suis indicate de the pour nothingness, le rien, oui. le néant, from which she was shrinking. Duquel elle, euh, elle se reculait. If you have some kind of understanding of color and design and light, directing is really three things. You're editing behavior over time and then controlling moments that should be really fast and making them slow and moments that should be really slow and making them fast. It is indeed a solemn occasion. I switch you over to our microphone near the bow of the ship. Oui, ça c'est un, une chose qu'on retrouve très souvent, euh, la dilatation du temps. Yes, euh, oui. that's what film is for. Oui, oui, oui. To either contract time, qui, soit pour contracter le temps, or extend it, whatever you wish. Ou l'expandre, comme vous le voulez. Oui, oui, ça c'est très intéressant. Hitchcock, in a way, was the master, let's say, sculptor of moments and time to, to take you through a, a sequence or to direct your perception in a way where he could elongate time or, or telescope it. Well, there are moments when you have to stop time. In my first film, in the Forest of Red Blues, I had the experience of that. In doing the Col Buissonnière, the child in the street met his mother with a man. Qui n'était pas son père. Describe to me in detail what the action was. On était avec les enfants qui se promenaient dans la rue au lieu d'être à l'école. Cutting to the mother before the boy saw her. Elle ne voyait pas, elle, elle ne regardait pas vers l'enfant. She was not looking at the child yet. On reprenait les enfants, on tournait le visage qui partait sur la mère qui le Then voyait s'éloigner. You showed the mother who saw them walking away. Oh, mon Dieu, Antoine, il m'a sûrement vu. I'm asking from a story point of view, what was the intention? Quelle était l'intention? L'intention, c'était de montrer que les deux s'étaient vus l'un l'autre. Comment le type peut se jamais vu? Et elle, elle dit, je suis sûr qu'il m'a vu. I would have hoped that there was nothing spoken. Truffaut n'est pas un styliste. Enfin, il aime pas ça. Enfin, je veux dire, il 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 filme admirablement bien, mais la question, la question, la question n'est jamais là. Tu es lâche, tu as peur. S'il y a une chose qu'il retient de Hitchcock, c'est celle de la concision, c'est de la vitesse. Mais la différence, c'est que Hitchcock 
a un sens absolument euh, mathématique de la construction de ces séquences. Hitchcock est un théoricien de l'espace. The thing I think about the most with Hitchcock is the visuals are so graphic and precise. There's a lot to learn from that. He said, that when I'm on the set, I'm not on the set. I'm watching it on the screen. Well, that's the key to Hitchcock, in a way. I mean, he, he sees the picture in his head. I imagine he just sat alone, and these images came to him, and he just never questioned it. He's ever not confident in every shot. That's one guy you don't really question. It always works within his world kind of perfectly. Yo, <laughs> 映画の中心にいるような振りをして、ま、実際多くの作品はいかにも中心にあるんですが、作家性という点で見ると、もう極端に端っこにいる人だろうと思います。遅刻取り本の中で語っていることは、あ、いちいち、あ、そうだ、自分の、自分も映画を撮る人間として、そういう心構えで映画を撮るべきだと、バイブルのように思いつつ絶対に遅刻の映画のマネだけはしてはならない
I said, Monty, I want you to look up at the hotel. Je veux que tu regardes également l'hôtel. Uh, so he said to me, dit, I don't know whether I would look up to the hotel. Si hotel. I said, why not? He said, I may be occupied by the people below. I said, I want you to look up to the hotel je window. Dit, je veux que tu en haut vers les de and please do so. Now, I was telling the audience, moi, across the street is the hotel. So an actor is going to try and interfere with me, organizing my geography. That's why all actors are cattle. C'est pourquoi je dis que tous les acteurs sont du bétail. Mm -hmm. Yeah, with Hitchcock, you get a sense of a kind of a self-contained psychology that we were going to explore his obsessions and what he was interested in. I think his collaboration there didn't go much farther than that. Acting, it's a great part of movie making, but it's not the only part of movie making. And, and I think Hitchcock was one of the first people to say, there is a structure to this language He probably did more for the psychological underpinnings of characterization in motion pictures than anyone. And on top of it, wouldn't allow any of his actors to explore that kind of behavior on set. It was the rigor of dramatizing it in narrative terms and then not allowing for it to like spill over the edge of the bucket. Coming out of World War II, which is the worst recorded war in history, destruction of civilization, no peace or comfort from religion, the paranoia, the anxiety, who are we, what are we? In post-World War II, there was a, a rupture, a change, um, particularly in the nature of what a performance or a, a persona on screen would be. And that is that the actor is the main instrument, really. And this is all expressed, I think, in Brando, James Dean, and Clift. Alfred Hitchcock was able to get the soul of the actors on screen, whether it's Cary Grant, even Marie Saint, uh, Grace Kelly, Jimmy Stewart, but it comes of another tradition. I'd love to see De Niro, Pacino, <laughs> Dustin Hoffman. <laughs> to see that school of actor, you know, try to flourish under this, under the iron umbrella of this is what this next three and a half seconds is about. I would like to ask you, do you feel it's too much trouble having to uh, direct actors in their acting? Ce que j'aime, c'est une formule intermédiaire. Like it's an intermediary formula. Comme de parler avec un acteur. To, say, to speak with an actor. Le soir après dîner. Uh, the evening after dinner. Et faire le dialogue and then create the dans dialogue. la nuit avec les mots de son vocabulaire qu'il a With the words which he himself has been using in a part of his own vocabulary. Yes. Well, does that mean you have to write overnight? Souvent le soir pour le lendemain. Oui. Dans Jules-Jim, par exemple, à un moment, les trois hommes sont assis. Ce qui a été complètement improvisé. And this was completely improvised. Vous sacrifiez vos moustaches? Oh oui, j'ai fait comme tout le monde. Mais je ne me plais pas ainsi. J'ai l'impression d'être tout nu. Mais enfin, ce sont des choses, évidemment, qui rendent le film plus vivant, mais qui sont très dangereux oh, pour... Euh, which are very dangerous. For the curve, for the... For the shape, for the, for the shape, shape of the picture. Oui. Ah, oui. I often am troubled as to whether I cling to the, what I call the rising curve shape of a story, and whether I shouldn't experiment more with a looser form of narrative. Sometimes it's very hard because uh, if you work for character direct, they'll take you along where they want to go. And I'm like the old lady with the Boy Scouts. I don't want to go that way. And this has always been a conflict with me. A 
it seems to me he finds material that he can kind of, you know, it's applied science. He can sort of apply the Hitchcock thing to this story. But now I have my series of linear plot devices leading to a fall from a high place. <laughs> Quite obviously, I'm, uh, I suppose, like any artist who paints or writes, I'm limited to a certain field. Je n'aime pas le contrôle au cinéma. J'aime pas l'idée d'un tournage où il n'y a pas une forme de transformation du scénario, de transformation de la matière humaine. Et je trouve qu'il y a quelque chose de transcendant dans le rapport au contrôle de Hitchcock. C'est-à-dire que, 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 que Hitchcock a inventé une clarté des, dans, dans l'écriture qui n'est non pas matérialiste, mais qui capture de l'invisible, euh, qui saisit une forme de spiritualité. I went high. Because I didn't want to spend a lot of footage on people getting out hoses and starting to put out a fire. Montrant des gens qui sortaient leurs trucs et éteignaient le feu. If you play it a long way away, you aren't committed to any detail. It wasn't just um, simply to show the whole town and how the birds are coming in. It, it took on another kind of apocalyptic religious feel. It was omniscient. It's the cleansing of the, of the earth. Whose point of view is it when you cut to above everything? God's point of view? Are we all being judged from above? You know, that, that kind of suggests that. Where are those papers now, exactly? For me, that angle is always something that has a kind of religious element to it. Est-ce que vous acceptez d'être considéré comme un uh, comme un artiste catholique. Go off the record. You know, you have Martin Balsam going up the stairs, right? And that's so deliberately slow. You just know he's going to get it, but you don't expect that high angle. There's something omniscient about it that's kind of frightening. Dans vos films, Je sens très fort l'odeur du PC originel aussi. Yes. J'avoue que je suis embarrassé pour donner des exemples, mais je sens vraiment dans votre travail le sens d'une culpabilité des hommes. Tout le monde a toujours quelque chose à, à se Everyone reprocher. Always has something to feel guilty about. And they're asking, did you ever hear of topaz? Colonel Kusinov, does the word topaz mean anything to you? It cuts to uh, the defector, and the camera's sort of up above him a little bit, and you see his eye shift. The eye is not covered. That means the angle had to just be right. Now, you know he's lying, which is that poem. You may leave the religion, but the hound of heaven is always there. That infuses everything. Uh, the whole thought process and the storytelling process. And continually turn our hearts from wickedness and from worldly things unto thee. C'est curieux parce que souvent, tous les films d'Hitchcock, à peu près, sont basés sur un transfert de culpabilité, y compris The Wrong Man. On me prête un crime que je n'ai pas commis, mais dans le fond, est-ce que je n'ai jamais commis un crime Donc c'est le transfert de culpabilité qui est la base de tous les films. Et pour moi, The, The Wrong Man est un des plus beaux films, parce qu'il y a ce transfert de culpabilité entre le vrai coupable et le faux coupable. Over the years, I would keep revisiting it, watching it, watching it over and over again. This is the average man, decent man, I should say. Family, kids, uh, suddenly picked up. Your name, Chris? You calling me? And everything, yes, it is. <laughs> everything points to him doing it. And you know he didn't. One, two, three, four. You're sure? Absolutely.
je pense qu'on ne peut pas faire un film comme ça. C'est impossible de faire un film comme ça si on ne vibre pas d'empathie pour chaque geste, chaque moment, chaque objet. Those extraordinary inserts where Henry Fonda is just sitting on the bunk. He looks at the cell around him and it cuts to different sections of the cell. What makes you feel oppressed? The lock on the door, but from what angle? Is it really his point of view? All these things are remarkable, I think. C'était impossible pour un cinéaste non catholique de faire cette scène de la prière de Rongman. Rien, ça soit impossible. Le coup de génie, le fondu avec les deux visages et le mal, le, on voit le mal, mais le mal, c'est pas le méchant, c'est pas le type qui fait le, le cambrioleur, c'est pas ça. Le mal, c'est le, le fait que ce, cet homme se soit retrouvé condamné alors qu'il était innocent, et le méchant ne fait n'est qu'un des agents du mal. Toujours avec ce même mouvement, Hitchcock se retire du film, ce qui permet au spectateur d'occuper une place prééminente dans, dans le film. Et en même temps, à la, à la fin du, du film, on a l'impression qu'on a vu un autoportrait de, de son auteur. C'est très, très troublant. Mais vous rêvez très souvent Not a lot, no. Et vous sentez l'importance du rêve, quoi, pour cette... When sense is in your work, the importance of dreams. Daydreams, probably. Sans le vouloir, vous retombez automatiquement sur le domaine de, du rêve qui est souvent fait sur le péril et la solitude. Well, that's probably me within myself. Parce que votre logique qui ne, qui ne satisfait pas les, les critiques, comme on l'a dit souvent, c'est un peu la logique des rêves. Look. I think it occurs because I'm never satisfied with the ordinary. I can't do well at the ordinary. Hitchcock keeps referring to these sort of fetish objects, keys and handcuffs and ropes and stuff, which are kind of dream objects, which have a kind of Freudian weight to them. Comme dans le rêve, il y a une sorte d'hyperperception de, des objets. Il y a des choses qui, tout d'un coup, des détails qui prennent une, qui prennent une prééminence, enfin, qui prennent une importance essentielle, et des choses essentielles qui sont au second plan. Et c est, c est, ça, c'est vraiment, vraiment le rêve. Un sac à main signifie, une clé signifie, une bouteille signifie. Et ce qu'elle signifie, on ne sait pas ce que ça signifie. Comme dans un rêve, on se dit, mais quelle est la clé des songes J'ai rêvé d'un oiseau, qu'est-ce que ça voulait dire dans, dans, dans Birds Pourquoi Et on ne sait pas. Dans le premier, l'homme qui en savait trop, il y a un plan magnifique où la mer lève les yeux au ciel, vacille un peu. Il y a une contradiction entre les panneaux filets qui vont très vite et le mouvement de l'actrice qui est très ralenti. La mer tombe et s'évanouit. À ce moment-là apparaît l'image du petit pins que la fille avait de sa médaille de ski en insert. Et du coup, il y a ce visage enfantin qui fait penser avec ce, ce, cette masse de fourrure derrière comme la tête d'un énorme monstre. Donc on pense à la belle et la bête. C'est aussi une image fascinante. C'est des images qui viennent aussi du cinéma muet. Silent pictures are the pure motion picture form. C'est la forme la plus pure de. C'est ça. There was no need. Dire qu'il n'y avait aucun besoin. To abandon the technique. La technique. Of the pure motion picture. Du cinéma pur. The way it was abandoned when the sound came in. De la manière dont ça a été abandonné quand on a amené le son. The craft was of course developed in silent cinema first. So the whole idea was, how do I tell the story 
without any dialogue. This is a brilliant way to train someone to think visually, and part of the reason the films have that incredible dreamlike feeling. Comme disait euh, Truffaut, les gens qui ont connu le, le secret perdu, les gens qui ont commencé à l'époque du cinéma muet, qui savent quelque chose du cinéma que tous les cinéastes qui ont commencé pendant le parlant ignoreront toujours. So many Hitchcock films would work silently. You could watch a Hitchcock film without any dialogue or music, and I think you'd still get a really high percentage of it. Il y a vraiment un, un savoir plastique là d'une force, c'est admirable. Et les transparences chez Hitchcock ont une fonction qui est vraiment qui est extrêmement complexe. to achieve a realism, but it's more of a, how should I put it, the spirit of realism. <laughs> it, it, isn't just, it isn't objective. Cette idée de, de plan de réalité, cette idée d'un personnage qui, comme dans un rêve, c'est-à-dire le personnage est en vrai et derrière le monde est comme une toile de rêve. Vertigo, c'est un de vos films les plus poétiques. Il est plus poétique que dramatique, même. Mais le film, a, dans le côté rêve, il a une espèce de lenteur, quelque chose yeah. de contemplatif que mm. n'ont pas mm. vos autres films. Ils sont oh. souvent construits sur la fulgurance, la rapidité. The aperture dealing with the point of view of an emotional man. Qu'est-ce qui intéressait le plus, euh, Monsieur Hitchcock, dans le dans le sujet? I was intrigued with the efforts to create an, a woman. Ce qui m'intriguait, c'était les efforts. Uh, in the image of a dead woman, yes. De créer euh, une femme à partir de l'image d'une femme morte. If you think that you can hide what your interests are, what your what your prurient interests are, what your noble interests are, what your fascinations are, if you think you can hide that in your work as a as a film director, you're nuts. You know, and I think that he was one of the first guys who said, I'm gonna go with it. <laughs> I'm just gonna, I'm gonna be, I gotta be me. In the case of his best work, there's a more direct umbilicus to his subconscious. Certainly, I think that's true of Vertigo. The sex psychological side Le, is that you have a man creating a sex image that he can't go to bed with her until he's got her back to the thing he wants to go to bed with. I should be back from your face and pinned at the neck. I told her that. I told you that. We tried it. Or metaphorically indulged in a form of necrophilia. That's what it really was. The thing you see that I liked and felt most when she came back from having her hair made blonde and it wasn't up. This means she has stripped but won't take her knickers off. You see, she says, all right. And she goes into the bath, and he is waiting. He's waiting for the woman to undress and come out new, ready for him. Ah, it's a both of it. And while he was looking at that door, he was getting an erection. We will now tell a story. Shut the machine off. What I love about Virgo is just, it's so perverted. It's just so perverted. Here, Judy, drink this straight down. It's like medicine. Why are you doing this? What, 
What good it do? I've always felt that the most interesting view of Vertigo would be her story. The color of your hair. Judy, please, it can't matter to you. And it's almost more honest than the guy's point of view. I let you change me, will that do it? I, I guess know. taking Scotty's point of view was... Will you love me? Hitchcock's yes. point of view. Yes. Hi. Un Vertigo is a film for which you have a lot of tendresse, I think. Yes, I, I enjoyed it, yes. Oui, oui, you know, I had Vera Miles tested and costumed. We were ready to go with her. She yes. went pregnant. Ah, oui. And... That was going to be the part that I was going to bring her out. She was under contract to me, oh, yeah. but I lost interest. I couldn't get the rhythm going again with that oh, yeah. silly girl. I don't think he would have been able to take Vera Miles into that Judy place, into that real kind of a slutty place. And so I think that he surmounted his restriction in that way. I saw the film fairly early in my life as a film person, I saw it through Marty. It became a, a lost film, so to speak, and I, I ain't talking to all the filmmakers in the 70s were trying to find copies of it. Some people had 16s, so it became a picture we were looking for. It was a kind of forbidden document, kind of sacred document that only certain insiders had privilege to, which is kind of hard to imagine in today's world of indiscriminate access to virtually everything. So the number of people who had seen Vertigo weren't that many. Well, Hitchcock wasn't talking about it that much because it wasn't very successful. Qu'est-ce qui vous aide dans le film? The hole in the story. The husband who pushed his wife off the tower. How did he know that Stuart wasn't going to run up those stairs? In the case of Vertigo, the machinations of the plot, uh, well, they do work, they function, and they function rather brilliantly, but the subtext seems to be bubbling up almost to the point where it's text. I can't really say that I believe the plot, and I don't take any of the, the, the story seriously. I mean, as a realistic story. So the plot is just a line that you can hang things on. And the things that he hangs on, they're all aspects of, you know, cinema poetry. And that's a film that I can't really tell where things start and end. I don't care. Or when he's following her in the streets in the car. What is he looking for? What's he looking for? The frustration is on his face. And you're like, where is this going? And you realize, no, that's totally connected to who he is in the film. The city itself is a character. The, the architecture itself. The mystery of old San Francisco. painting. We cannot see Kim Novak's face looking at that painting. How important her gaze must be. But no, it's not, because it's all a ruse. The connection that Kim Novak has with that painting is bullshit, right? The only gaze that matters is Jimmy Stewart's gaze, watching the, the curl in the hair and how it's similar to the painting on the wall. I'm sure he didn't shoot coverage from the front. Someone like me, I would do that. We're not that good. We don't understand the power of the image, the way that he did. I want anything. I want to get out of here. Judy, do this for me. This whole business of remaking her, yes, we get it. Yes, Everyone's talking about the fetishism of it. I don't like it. No, we'll take it. Fine. It's good. But it's this extraordinary sense of loss that he's trying to fill that void 
um, maybe maybe it reaches out to everyone that because of that. You know, we could put, bring our own sense of melancholy or loss to it. Judy, Judy, I tell you this: these past few days have been the first happy days I've known in a year. I know. It's about desire, but we all understand that. We all understand the idea of desire. That's part of what makes us us. I think Kim Novak coming out of the bathroom is the single greatest moment in history of movies. At that moment, everything that Hitchcock was about and everything that cinema is about comes together in the most beautiful way, which is, yes, it's a fantasy, but the fantasy is real to him. That kiss is so extraordinary. That's the one moment where he gets some kind of fulfillment. And then after that, it's time to go. There was where you made your mistake, Judy. You shouldn't keep souvenirs of a killing. You shouldn't have been... You shouldn't have been that sentimental. It's a world that he creates that reflects, I think, what it is to be alive and what it is to live in fear. A good fear, a natural fear, but fear just the, just, just the same. Um, of just the human condition, of who we are. But it's more than a story. It's more than a story. It really is like living a lifetime with him. And the film has not been a success or an échec. It'll break even. That's it. Oh, it's quite quand même un échec puisque c'est là. Yes. It's tricky, you know, that people will learn the wrong lessons from failures, just as they sometimes learn the wrong lessons from success. And the thing that I find so depressing about Hollywood is how often people really feel the first three months of anyone's response to your film. That's it. Carve that into marble, that was the response. It's not true. It wasn't true for Vertigo. There is sometimes a tendency yes, among filmmakers to get the audience. I personally am interested in the audience. I mean that one's film should be designed for 2,000 seats and not one seat. Right. This to me is the power of the cinema. It is the greatest known mass medium there is in the world. Le génie d'Hitchcock, il est fondé sur l'érotisme, il est fondé sur des, sur des émotions relativement troubles. Et je trouve que ce qui, est, ce qui est assez étonnant, ce qui est assez admirable, c'est la façon dont il arrive à transmettre, communiquer ces, ces choses délicates, obscures, d'une façon qui est acceptable par tous les publics. Il y a deux obsessions comme ça qui sont de faire le film avec le public ou pour le public. Et comme moi, je vis vraiment comme une, une passion au sens religieux ou une déclaration d'amour très très vive et très que, que je ne cesse de ne pas comprendre. Directors of Hitchcock's generation, the ones who came up under the studio system, were all mindful of their audience. But in Hitchcock's case, it ran deeper than that. His films are made in a dialogue with the public. It's close, almost intimate. It doesn't matter where the film goes. Cela m'est égal où va le film. 
If you designed it correctly, si vous l'avez plané correctement, the Japanese audience should Japon scream at the same time as the Indian audience. Right. Could you still play an audience the way Hitchcock can? They do, but it's a different audience and it's a different playing. See, the audience has been raised on films which are very loud, uh, which have a climax every two seconds. Now we're so pummeled by stories and visual hyperbole that it's a very different world. In trying to move the needle in terms of getting humans to accept your theses, Hitchcock's coming out of a world where everything was a proscenium and everything was structured, and he was able to take that structure and bend it and twist it and exaggerate it to, to a greater or lesser effect. By the time you get to Psycho, people are watching television. And Ed Gein is informing what's happening in the movies. We're starting to borrow from the real world. The roman was maybe inspired by a fait divers. I believe so, yes, in Wisconsin. We are in Wisconsin, quelque part. Psycho, in order to get the audience effects. Je dirais que dans le Psycho, pour avoir les effets sur l'audience. I would say that this is pretty well as cinematic as a lot of pictures. Oui, 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 plus, oui, oui, oui. It was a very interesting construction. I've tried for a long time to si. play the audience. Oui. Let's say we were playing them like an organ. Why don't you call your boss and tell him you're taking the rest of the afternoon off? Right. The scene with uh, John Gavin and Janet Lee in the beginning. What do I do with my three the element there is the bra. Okay. Um, but it's shot very simply, but ominously. There's something oh. ominous about it. The scenes in the uh, the office are kind of all right, you know, with that Texan. I'm buying this house for my baby's wedding present. Forty thousand dollars cash. For his style, the blandness of the scenes and the blandness of the uh, framing um, is just really a, a kind of a bridge to get you to the next major moment. I think his instinct is right in telling stories like that. I never carry more than I can afford to lose. How benign can we make these images that just connect the dots? I don't even want it in the office over the weekend. Put it in the safe deposit box in the bank and... It costs only $800,000. And I used a complete television <inaudible> unit to do it. He was flirting with you. I guess he must have noticed my wedding ring. It was necessary to make the, the, uh, the robbery and um, what the happened to the girl purposely on the long side to get an audience absorbed with I her flight. Come in. Where I slowed up was when I came to the scenes that indicated For time sure. and trouble. Hitchcock really does love to surprise people and to take you in unusual directions. He sort of thrived on that and he, he was very proud of that. That's what his cinema is kind of based on. The beginning of Psycho, it's, it's one of the great misdirections. He is playing with your expectations of where you're supposed to be in a movie, where you're supposed to be in a Hitchcock movie, where you're supposed to be in a universal movie. You can argue the value of Janet Lee's performance. You can say, well, that's a little flat, that's a little this, that's a little kabuki. Maybe all of those things are leading you to believe, as an audience member, there's a, there's a bigger cumulative effect. She's servicing an expectation. The best scenes for me are ones he must have spent time on, the driving shots. Uh, you had to have 
spend time on those, particularly the points of view somehow. And the framing of Janet Lee in the center of the frame with top of the steering wheel and the bottom of the frame. Because you can make a choice. You can go above the steering wheel. You know, or you can go further out. But then maybe you won't see your eyes as well. So that's like the perfect size. In quite a hurry. Yes. I didn't intend to sleep so long. I almost had an accident last night. The scene with the policeman. Here all night. Of course, the framing of him staring into the into the car. Yes, we know with the glasses he's scary. But there's something about the restraint of those frames. See, and the more you restrain, the better it is when the explosion happens. And on the way to the explosion, there are these meditative states driving. Get Mr. Cassidy for me. After all, Cassidy, I told you, all that cash. And there's a sense of, of movement ahead, movement ahead. She steals money, then she decides to drive away, then she becomes guilty about it. Gee, I'm sorry I didn't hear you in all this rain. Then she meets this guy in a motel, and he's telling her all his problems. A few years ago, Mother met this man, and he, he talked her into building this motel. You're, you're watching. You want to know what happens. She's going to bring that money back? And then what is Anthony Perkins really going to do? You know, he has his mother there. Maybe there's going to be this whole thing going on with the mother and him and her. And... When he died, too, it was just too great a shock for her. And I mean, you're really, you're, you're taken down a path. But what's great about it is that all your expectations are taken and turned upside down. You know, there are certain rules, and he pulled the pin and rolled a grenade into the middle of that, that conference room and destroyed all those rules. The camera's very much with Marion, right? Even to the point where you have that very famous shot of the shower head. All of a sudden, you go from Marion, and the camera is then in this very strange place where you see both her showering and the shadowy figure behind that kind of visqueen curtain. He did it with an eye towards having to shift point of view 35 minutes into the film. the very first screening of that film. None of us had a clue what was going to happen. And when that murder, that shower scene came, I've never seen an audience react like that. You could hear a sustained shriek from the audience downstairs. It wasn't like, ah, ah, ah. It was like, ah, like they wanted to close it out. But they couldn't stop watching it. <laughs> you wanted to close your eyes, but you couldn't. <laughs> Hitch was right. You didn't have to build suspense anymore. They were, they were, they were, they were, they were bl blithering idiots. The audience was, like, oh, it happened. They couldn't believe what happened. They kept thinking it couldn't have happened because she's going to be alive. It was every impulse that you have from going to movies. It was the first time that going to the movies was dangerous. Seven days. Ça dure sept jours. Seventy setups. I used a nude girl a lot, and I shot some of it in slow motion. Ah oui. Mm. Because of covering the breast, you couldn't do it quick. You couldn't pas le faire measure vite. it correctly. You couldn't measure it measurer correctly. That's when you feel like this guy really has his finger on the pulse, you know, of not only just audience response, but the world in general, that the world was ready for a film like that. It didn't know it was, but it was. This was a small story, but it, it represented probably something much larger on the horizon. At that time, as it is now, we expect certain things. 
And it took storytelling at that time and says, no, I'm not going to give you that. I'm going to give you something else because you think everything is so cool. You're the end of the 50s, the 60s are going to look glorious to us. I think it was really important for who we were then. You have Vietnam, you have World Revolution, you have everything that happened in the 60s and the society has never been the same. That picture really touched upon that, I think, Psycho. Of course, you want everything so neat and wrapped up. Well, life isn't like that. Even the stories I'm going to tell you are not like that now. My main satisfaction, My main satisfaction is satisfaction is that film did something to an audience. I really mean that. In many ways, I feel my satisfaction with our, satisfaction our art with our art achieved something a of chose mass emotion. Une émotion de masse. It wasn't a message. It wasn't some great performance. It wasn't a highly appreciated novel that served an Ce audience. It was pure film. People will say what a terrible thing dit, to make. The subject was horrible. The people were small. Petits, there were no characters. In it. Car I know all this. But I know one thing. Mais je sais une chose. The use of film in constructing film en this story caused audiences Mon all over the world a des au monde. Uh, to react and become emotional. My only pride in That's the picture why. is that the film. picture belongs to filmmakers. It belongs to et us, film. you and I. Nous appartient à nous et à vous et à moi. Yes, how, how do you want to handle this? Well, I'm the cameraman. You are the director, and you are directing a double portrait of a Mr. Hitchcock and of a Mr. Truffaut. And whatever you want, any idea that comes... But really, it's my directing Mr. Truffaut, isn't it? Yes, but you direct also yourself. Ah, I got, I got, I got one. Okay, okay. <laughs> now, here we are, look, here's the angle. Now, I'm going to be like this, you see. Now, Mr. Truffaut should half turn around and look back to me. Regarde à moi. <laughs> like this, you see, then? <laughs> we better not have cigars, all right? So nice. Otherwise, it, may, it might make us look like movie directors. <laughs> and God forbid we ever look like that. <laughs> The conversation that began in 1962 extended far beyond the book and bloomed into a real friendship. Hitchcock and Truffaut spoke and wrote to each other constantly. They read each other's scripts, made story and casting suggestions, and screened each other's films. After the first edition of the book was published in 1966, Truffaut made a movie a year, sometimes two. Hitchcock made only three more films. Right to the end, he was haunted by the question he had raised with Truffaut. Should I have experimented more with character and narrative? Did I become a prisoner of my own form? The same old questions still swirled around him. Was he an artist or an entertainer? Could anyone really claim to be an artist working within the factory conditions of Hollywood? In America, you call this man Hitch. 
in France. We call him Monsieur Hitchcock. Two weeks after the American Film Institute tribute, wrote Truffaut, resigned to the fact that he would never shoot another film, Hitchcock closed his office, dismissed his staff, and went home. Francois Truffaut's energy and his love of cinema seemed inexhaustible. The idea that he would be dead at the age of 52, only four years after Hitchcock, was unthinkable. It still is. The last completed project of Truffaut's life, published a few months before he died, was an updated edition of his book in which he gave us Alfred Hitchcock. Not the television star, not the master of suspense, but Alfred Hitchcock, the artist who wrote with the camera. I suppose the films with atmosphere, suspense and incident are really my creations as a writer. Dans neuf films sur dix, vous avez montré des personnages entre qui se crée un fossé parce qu'ils avaient un secret, ils s'obstinaient à ne pas se révéler l'un à l'autre. L'ambiance était de plus en plus oppressante jusqu'à ce qu'ils se décident à s'expliquer, euh, ce qui leur permettait de se libérer. Vous reconnaissez vos films, là Sure, yeah. C'est-à-dire que finalement, vous êtes surtout intéressé, vous abritant derrière une histoire de caractère policier, à filmer des dilemmes moraux. Sure, let's try. Ben, ça sera ma conclusion. Yeah. <laughs>